Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Antonetti. And I'm Rufina Antonetti. And we are here to talk about... The Word of God. The, the Word of God. Talk straight about the Bible. Yeah, that's what we... That's our aim every day, just to try to bring the best to the table because, Amen. you know, the Word of God is bread, and we try to bring fresh bread every morning. There's nothing like going to a bakery and getting hot bread. Mm, I know. And then you put butter on it, and mm. you're doing good for the day. And this is what we do. So when you come to Talk Straight Bible, keep in mind, and please pray for us as we bring you fresh bread every day. Amen. Well, and this also comes by staying fresh in the presence of the Lord. Amen. you got to be planted well in the house of Adonai. But he says that even in old age, you will bring forth Amen. fruit. Amen. still flourish. Definitely. Yeah, you know, and... Um, I was 23 when it happened for me. Now I am 62, going on 63. I don't have a problem saying that. And Some you don't people, have to tell my age. I will not. <laughs> I will not. I do understand that. I've, got, I've become wise enough to know it's okay. it's not to good. tell your age. It's all good. Um, because you're of age to tell your own age. That's right. I am <laughs> going to be 66. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Now you now you think about that. We, we, we're still thriving and we're striving and we're going with the Word of God. Well, today we're looking at verse 26 because it is magnificent to study in Proverbs. Again, I don't know how long we're going to be doing this. We may take a break and do, you know, uh, things apart. But up to this point, the Spirit of God has been leading us to speak about Proverbs together. And we have independent studies. So we have... Uh, not so much different opinions, but different sides to it yes. that still stay within the contents of Scripture. Amen. Amen. So, let's read the first part. And we're looking at verse 26 today. This is, For the Lord shall be your confidence and shall keep your foot from being taken. Remember, this was after the deliberation or the speaking of the Proverbs. When you go to Verse 1, my son, my son, keep it. My son, pay attention. My son, don't depart from the word of God. Mm. Don't depart from it. The moment you depart from it, you're in trouble. But isn't that what he is saying in the first verse? He says, my son, do not forget my law. Do not let your heart, um, excuse me, but let your heart keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. So many times it says, don't depart from the word of God. Don't, wow. don't, don't leave the word of God. Keep your eye on the word of God. I was telling my wife yesterday, do you know that it is a sin not to study the word of God once you become a Christian? It is a sin. Every day when you get up in the morning, give the first fruits of your day to study. That's what it's all about. Amen. How we're how we going to keep our foot from slipping is by the word of God. But let's go ahead and let's see what my wife is going to bring to but you. I, I just love what you just read, you know, because it says that when we don't forget his teachings, there are length of days and years to our life. Mm -hmm. There is mercy and kindness. Lord. Um, there is favor. Um, in the sight of God and man, and then we could put our trust in him, right? So today we're talking about that. We're talking about God's confidence, our confidence in the Lord. Mm. And that word confidence in the, in, the, in the dictionary means the feeling or belief that one can rely on someone or something. Firm trust, wow. the state of feeling certain about the truth of something. That is beautiful. That's mm. that's that's the the regular dictionary, right? <laughs> and so that tells us so much about the Lord. That tells us so much about being confident in Him. But you know, um, this morning I I pretty I pretty much got a little emotional. You ever get emotional when every, you're reading every the day, Word of God? Every day, every <laughs> day. But today, for some reason, reading this, I really got a little emotional because when I read the scriptures and when I read scriptures like this, I can I honestly ask myself. What does this mean? Mm. I have faith. I have confidence in God. I believe that he is a God that can keep me from harm and disaster, from sickness. But the reality is that these things do come upon us. 
we can and will experience these kind of situations in our lives, right? Absolutely. Well, you know, one time um, I was in, I was, uh, or once upon a time, I was in a hospital visiting someone and I saw a, a, a Jew there. And, you know, whenever I see a Jew, I get excited because I want to ask them questions, I believe it or not. No, I know you do. I, you know. And you do. <laughs> and I do. And I, asked, and I asked him the question. I said, what, what is the difference? May I ask you a question? He said, of course. Um, because they're the teachers. They're supposed to give us instruction according to the law. I said, what is the difference between faith and trust? He said, well, faith, he said, imuna, is basically a knowledge base faith that we understand what the law says, to give it to you in the short term, okay? He said, trust, however, is another word which represents having an experience with God. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to know about God and knowledge, but it's another thing to experience God in that trust. The word is bitikon, or bit, uh, uh, batak, but they say bitikon. And it's remember what we went through in verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Mm -hmm. And lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall make he shall make your path straight. A lot of people quote this, but say, what is the next part? <laughs> it says, in all your ways acknowledge him, he shall make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart, depart, depart from evil, and it shall be health to your navel and marrow to your bones. Well, think about this. It says that the Lord is our confidence and because he is our Lord, then we shall be kept from our foot or should keep our foot from being taken. Now, the first thing we have to understand is that the word Lord here or the title Lord is Jehovah, where we get Yahweh or Yahweh. And what is the letters representing Yahweh? A strong hand that has the breath of covenant, of life. And then it is connected to the covenant of life. So when we call upon God, we're calling upon the one that is strong, that has the covenant of life, and he connects us to that name to give us redemption. But Yahweh or Yehovah actually means self-existing one. Now, for those who don't know, let me just say this, that in the Hebrew, this name is also representing not only self-existing one, but the one who's all-powerful and doesn't need anyone to hold him up. Yeah. But this is the one that holds us up because we're not like him. We're not self-existing. We are relying upon his breath and his power to keep us in every way. Amen. So for the Lord. Now, you know what's interesting about the word for? A lot of people don't look at these things, but the word key actually means a burning, a burning. We use it as because, we use it as but, okay? But it's actually representing something that should burn for the Lord. Mm. Our reliance shall be burning for the Lord. Mm. Now, the word shall be is interesting because this word in the Hebrew is iha or ahi or ihi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some say, um, actually, in the English, you could say it haya. Okay, let's keep it there. Haya. And you know something? Just yesterday, I was in Genesis and I wanted to know where this word haya originates, of course, is in Genesis, but how was it used? And I found something very interesting. The first time it's used is in verse 3 of Genesis 1, let there be light. So let there be is haya. So when God keeps us, is he is the one that lets us be safe. Mm -hmm. Here mm -hmm. in verse 6, and God said, let there be a firmament. Notice let there be light, let there be a firmament. But the, the third time I saw it here in Genesis, lit my light bulb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens wow. to divide between day and night. And what was interesting about this is that first we have 
the existence, let there be light, let there be a firmament, and then God says, let there be light in the firmament. So it tells us that we can be, but if we exist or try to exist without God, there is no light in our firmament. Don't you know that you have a firmament in your life? What's your heaven? One of my friends wrote in one of his songs. What's your heaven? Is God ruling your life to the point that there's light in your firmament to divide the day from the night? Isn't this what this is all about, keeping us? And so, now, look at this. And he said that he not only would keep us, but protect us from the evil that's in this world, because that's what this is all about. For the Lord shall be your confidence. See, and, and that's exactly what I was talking about, because we it says that he will keep us from, from, from these things, right, mm -hmm. in our lives. But still, we go through them. Right. And so I I was thinking that God is just showing me and showing us that we have an assurance that whatever happens to us, we can overcome it because of what Jesus said himself. I have told you these things so that in you, you may have peace in this world. You will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Wow. So in the midst of all that we go through, we can still be at peace mm. because he is our Prince of Peace. We can be comforted because um, he is our comforter. We have wisdom because he is our wonderful counselor. Isn't that beautiful? Awesome. When we are weak, he is our mighty God, our warrior. The Lord is his name, the Bible says. And when we need a dad and a father, he is our everlasting father. Mm. That is so beautiful. And I can't put my confidence in stupidity and folly and, and, and nonsense and in other people because that only brings sorrow to our lives, right? That's right. Well, you know, you said something that's pivotal, especially to me, um, when we need a dad, when we need our father. Um, Sometimes we come to the Lord with the with the perspective and the concept of our earthly father and try to match it with God the Father. Mm -hmm. Well, see, my father left our home when I was five years old. And um, so there was no security there for me. I grew up without a dad in the house, you know. Um, and, you know, when I came to the Lord and the Lord drew me to him and I accepted that salvation, I accepted that to be converted... And only by grace can you even accept it. You can't even accept it unless God gives you grace to do that. But at times when I failed, I would ask God, please don't leave me. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. that was my concept, concept. Mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. my earthly mm -hmm. father. Mm -hmm. And I thought that my heavenly father, inside, although I knew in my heart that wouldn't happen, but still I had doubt and I had to ask, please do not leave me. And it took a few years for me to really understand this even though I knew it, but when I got into the scriptures and then the scriptures began to get into me, that faded away, melted away, because I realized that I will never leave you nor forsake you. And he guarded my footsteps oh so many times. Just yesterday in my time with the Lord, I started thinking about the times when I was walking uh, without him in the sense of not following him in the world. Oh my Lord, how many times... I could have lost my life out there. Mm -hmm. I saw it. I mean, it's like I just kept thinking about my old life. And through it all, I realized how he kept me because he had something for me. I feel his presence yeah. for myself right here yeah. in this place. Yeah. And uh, I look and I see, you know, when I was a little boy and I was on that stoop by myself, maybe about seven, eight years old, I guess. And I looked to the heavens. For some reason, I looked to the heavens and I said, God, I love you. And all the hairs of my body stood up. Well, I, I experienced what Job said in in chapter 4, verse 15 of Job. Uh, the spirit passed before my face and all the hairs of my flesh stood up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So if your hair stand up when you're talking about the Lord, it's just the spirit reminding you that his energy is in your flesh. 
he will keep you. You know, that's a that's a beautiful thing um, because that reminded me of when, you know, I was I was doing drugs. And um, when I was sitting in my room one time, yeah, because I was just so distorted over everything that I was doing, knowing that mm. it was all wrong to do. Mm. Um, I wrote a letter to God. You know, and I think that's where my experience truly came mm. with God, mm. um, writing that letter and expressing the things that I was feeling, that I was, what I was going through, what I didn't want anymore, what I, what I was looking for in life, because I, I, I came from, I came from a, a, a good family. My, my parents were hardworking people and, and, and my brothers and sisters, they were younger than me, but they weren't, they weren't um, in school and they were doing what they were supposed to do. Okay. But I was the one, I was the one that wanted the world. I was the one that wanted, you know, to be with the bad boys. And I, I was the one that wanted those things. But one day I sat down and wrote to God. Mm. And I believe that that was the beginning of my reconciliation or my salvation, as we as we want to call it, with God. Mm. Even though it took years later that I really understood who Jesus was or is in my life. And so what happened in this conversion? I mean, you said that you had an experience where you actually came out of your body or something at this point? Well, that was years later. Uh, okay. That was years later. Okay, yeah. so he, he took you out of your body, showed you who, where you were, mm -hmm. and then you came to him because he helped you. I got to emphasize that, you know, you don't, if God is your confidence and the one who sustains you, you have nothing to do with this salvation. Amen. You know, Paul said in, in uh, Philippians chapter 1, 6, being confident in this very thing, he who began this good work in you will, will finish it until the day of Jesus Christ. Think about this. You didn't start the work. He started the work. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to help him mm -hmm. finish the work. He will finish the work in you. The, 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 the sad thing about it sometimes is that even as Christians— we run after nonsense. We, we, we do <laughs> stupid things. We run after the foolishness of, of the world and stuff like that. Hmm. And I ran into this scripture that I just, I, I mean, it, it just made me cry. Um, in Ecclesiastic, Solomon writes um, in 725, I set my heart to know, hmm. to search to seek out wisdom. Hmm. That's where our heart should be, wow. right? But a lot of times it's not there. And he says, and he continues, and the reason of these things, and to know the wickedness of folly and even of foolishness and madness. Hmm. Okay, so obviously there was things going on in Solomon's life and there was things going on around him, all right, that he recognized that he needed to set his heart to know and to search and to seek God's wisdom. Mm. And I believe that Solomon was saying what Paul says in Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Other translation says, meditate on these things, dwell on these things, reckon on these things. The, the Amplified, I love it, center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. So think about it. Wow. Think about it. <laughs> you know, being confident is actually saying to release our foolishness. Mm. That's what he says. Mm. The Lord is my confidence. He saves me from my own foolishness. Wow. You know, the picture of these three letters in the Hebrew of confidence represents a carved out hand that mm. has eternal, watch this, it's circle. It has an eternal essence of it with the staff of the shepherd. Think about this. Wow. He's the one that leads you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me beside still waters. He 
restores my soul. He gives rest to us. That's a that's a beautiful thing when you know the Hebrew letters and their true <laughs> meaning, because yeah. you get the essence oh, yeah. of that word. Mm. You know, I mean, the shepherd encircling, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, holding by the, the staff, staff, leading you. Leading, That's right. you know, I mean, all of those things in three little Hebrew letters, you know, and you get a full, a full picture, a full picture of Jesus, a full picture of who he is in our lives. Well, look what it says. He shall keep your foot from mm -hmm. being taken. Here is the word taken. It means to be put in chains, to be ta uh, captive. Mm. And when we're foolish... We're taken captive by our own foolishness and the enemy. Now, listen to what I'm going to say now. The enemy has right to take hold of your feet if you're walking wow. in the path wow. that is unrighteous. Wow. Did you hear what I said? The only way the enemy can touch you is when you are out of the way of the will of God. Mm -hmm. He says, I have legal right to attack you mm -hmm. and take because you're walking out outside of the comfort zone of Christ. Now, think about this also. The word confidence also means loins, mm -hmm. which represents wrapping your mind, as Rafina said, on those things which are God. That's the only way. That's the only way. And so, you know what? Um, we're going to pick this up tomorrow because we're not finished here. Amen. We're not finished because we could talk a lot about the confidence, but we need to finish this because I have some other things I want to share with you. And I'm sure that Rafina has other things she want to share with you. But we thank you for stopping by Talk Straight Bible today and just being with us as we break the bread of life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God bless you and have a wonderful, spirit-filled day. Amen. Amen.